Now students, now let's see how do we run BFS on your directed graph, right? So as I told you, uh, only one small modification you have to make. So earlier, what you used to do? So for example, like if this used to be the case, okay, so what do you used to say in case of a undirected graph that when we push A into the queue, and when we take it out, you will say that B and C are the neighbors of A and you pushed B and C into the queue. But now this will not be the case. So only neighbor of A, which will be counted this time, it will be B. So the point is that the neighbor, the definition of neighbor will be the nodes to which you can reach, right? Those will be counted as neighbor. So from A, you can reach B. Definitely you cannot reach C. For C, A is the neighbor, right? But for A, in this case, C is not the neighbor. What we have defined here in this algorithm, the definition of neighbor, right? So let's run, uh, so let's assume that now A is our starting node and let's run BFS on this graph starting from A, correct? So now let's see what we'll do. Definitely we'll first of all in the array, we'll push A, right? And mark A as visited. Now we'll have to take A out because it is the only element. And we will now see what are the neighbors of A. So in this case, B is the only neighbor. So now you will push only B and mark it as simultaneously, you'll mark it as visited. Fine. Now, B is into the queue. What can you DQ from this queue? Only B. You have taken B out. Now see what are the neighbors of B which are yet not been visited. C and D. So what you will do? You mark them as visited and push them into the queue. Now what? <coughs> now, which element you will DQ? Definitely C. Now you have taken C out. Now you will see the neighbors of C which have not been visited so far. So A is already visited, right? Only F is not visited. So you will mark F as visited and push it into the queue. Now what? You will DQ D. Fine. So neighbor of D which has yet not been visited, it's only E. We'll mark it E as visited and push it into the queue, right? Now from, now, which element you will DQ? F, any neighbor of F which has yet not been visited? No, from F you cannot go anywhere, fine. You'll take F out and uh, you have already taken F out. You have seen there are no neighbors of F now. So what you will do? Jump to the next element E, from E, any neighbor of E which has yet not been visited. So only one neighbor F, but it has already been visited. Nothing you can do. You have already taken E out, nothing to push. Nothing is remaining in the queue. So your algorithm has terminated. So what's the BFS traversal here? It's been A, B, C, D, F, E. Fine. Now. I like to ask you one question and the detailed answer of this question will be given to you when uh, we'll uh, see the application of BFS. Now I ask you one question in the previous graph also we have seen. Now there are some loops, right? Could you see? There are some loops. So in this case, there is this loop in this graph, right? And uh, now this, this won't be counted as a loop, right? This won't be counted because from here you are going here and then just terminating from here, 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 and now you cannot go here. So there is one loop. So now my question is, can BFS be used to detect loop in the graph? And if yes, will there be some different approach when we are dealing with directed and an undirected graph or will the approach will stay the same? So the first question is, first of all, 
in the very first place can we use BFS to detect loop in any graph if yes so whether that graph needs to be directed or undirected and if you can detect in both of them so the approach you will take will it differ or it will be the same this is a very good question usually asked in interviews so just pause think over it and watch for the next videos in which we'll take up this detailed discussion how bfs can be used or cannot be used to detect loop in your graphs thank you